Chapter 2 The Hells Well, no shit! Krynan furiously spat. The burning ground was approaching quickly. Krynan knew he had no more flesh to lose, and he braced his bones for impact. His skeleton slammed into the ground, shattering into more pieces than there were bones. His body spread over the landscape of the hells, and the strange singing stopped. For a moment, silence took over. Krynan lay amongst the flames, unable to move, hardly able to think, and even less able to perceive what was going on around him. The world was unlike anything he had experienced in his life. Back home, he had always been able to at least try to defend himself. He had never been completely hopeless. The fires burned him. The heat was suffocating. Krynan couldn't writhe or crawl or attempt to find any kind of respite from the pain. He was only shards of bone scattered across the landscape. All he could do was lay and wait for whatever was to happen. So, this is forever he thought fearfully to himself. His body lay in pieces, sprawled out through the fires of the hells. Eventually, he started to make out the sounds around him. He heard the pleading and screaming of his fellow damned, watched as laughing armored demons stomped through the flame in pursuit of desperate fleeing prisoners. He tried to close his eyes, but to his dismay, there were no eyelids. For all he knew, there weren't even any eyes. The daily activities of those who accompanied him in the hells was a sight to behold. He watched as the strong hunted the weak. Some of them planted daggers into their targets' backs. Some just chopped them in half with giant glowing swords. Everyone screamed, some with bloodlust and some with terror. For what could have been days, Krynan lay in the same spot on the ground and watched as more bodies fell from the sky and shattered just as he had. As he lay there, he thought of his life. From a young age, Krynan had trained to become a warrior. He had grown to be among the best Black Knight had to offer. He was a spectacle with a sword and pistol and a master of silent execution of his mission. He was a member of Sentry Squad, a centurion, and like all centurions, he was famous among the army. He was, however, and to his end, very easily distracted. In life, few people meant much to him. He had two friends, Alec Flynn and Alia Souls. They were all he needed and all he would allow himself to get close to. Love was easily lost or taken away in his experience. He believed that growing close to people always ended in pain for him. He carefully cared for his friends, however, and they greatly loved him back. As Krynan thought about his friends and of love lost, his thoughts landed on the one person that he had ever been in love with in his entire life. He had not spoken to her since the war in Camelot seven years prior. The two had only known each other for a week, and then they never spoke again, but that week had filled Krynan's heart for an entire lifetime as far as he had been concerned. They were two teenage cadets. She, the daughter of Commander Dorax Immel, and he, the son of Commander Crinan Jameso Sr., both of them depending on each other to survive in the Kamlotian wilderness. Her name was Malinka. I will find you. Those were the last words he had told her before they were scooped away by their parents, words that had proved to have been a lie. He had never kept his promise. He had never found her. He didn't try once. Krynan had heard rumors and news about Malinka, seeing as she was nobility in Black Knight culture, but the opportunity never came for him to meet her again. He had assumed that he had simply become a memory of hers, or that she had forgotten about him entirely. Sadly, Krynan lost his chance to ever find his love again. He remembered hearing the news that she had fallen in battle, he recalled running into the woods and weeping bitterly that night, as he had daily told himself the lie that he would see her again, facing the truth that he would never see her again, or love again, was heartbreaking at minimum, world-shattering at most. No! he heard somebody nearby scream. It tore him from his reverie, and he couldn't help but observe. 
a dripping, oozing, pale-skinned demon approached. Its steps were awkward, and its large, fat belly jiggled from side to side as he walked. The massive creature held a hook the size of Crinan in its hand, and laughed and whooped chaotically as it chased down its prey. Crinan watched in terrified curiosity as the creature finally caught up with its target and powerfully swung his hook. The point of the massive weapon impaled the terrified prisoner, and the monster lifted the person's torn and bleeding body up off the ground. A worm on a hook! The demon laughed as he watched the prisoner squirm to break free. Try being faster next time. It's more fun that way. Grinan watched as the demon reached a massive, fat-fingered hand out and ripped the prisoner's body from his hook. The strength of the demon and aggression in his action split the prisoner's body in half, and Grinan watched as his guts splashed out onto the ground. The demon hurled the prisoner's top half in one direction, an arc of gore and blood trailing behind, and then his bottom half in another, laughing heartily as he did so. Good luck putting your little body back together, the monster taunted. The sound of the poor person wailing in the distance caused the corpulent demon to throw his head back and laugh. Crinan lay motionless and silent, not that he had any choice. He was only a stone's throw from the demon and did not want to be its next victim. Unfortunately, as he had not yet learned, that was not how the hells worked. The demon's vision seemed to glaze over for a moment as he reached out and tapped at the empty air in front of his face. Grinan watched curiously at the strange behavior for a few moments, and then saw the demon gasp in delight. Well, well, who do we have here? The creature bellowed as he awkwardly turned towards Krynan's direction. The rolls in his flesh jiggled as he eagerly stomped his tree-trunk-shaped feet. His abnormally wide mouth formed into a grin. A newcomer, by the looks of it. A little black knight. He laughed a disturbingly gleeful laugh and licked his lips hungrily. A newbie. Such a delight. A little virgin. Let me say I'm honored to be the one to pop your hell's cherry. He threw his head back and laughed heartily. The demon's gaze went out of focus again, and he jabbed one of his fingers in the air in front of him, an action that Crinan found odd. Soon after, a black haze enveloped Crinan, and the tendrils that had surrounded him in heaven shot out in all directions from where he lay. They returned quickly, carrying pieces of bone with them. Crinan groaned fearfully as he felt his body reassemble. His skeleton flew in from all directions and snapped together, and he felt his muscles and tissue begin to grow back. For the first time, in what felt to him like days, he felt his heart begin to beat again. Unfortunately for him, it was pounding. The demon approached Krynan's newly formed body and knelt down, grinning menacingly at him. Krynan was filled with fear and tried to scramble away, but the creature threw his hand out and snatched him by the throat with his massive fingers. Little warrior in life? The demon asked, mocking Krynan with a voice that one would only use with babies. He lifted Krynan's body into the air and shook him like a doll, grinning wildly and mischievously as he did. Krynan felt his joints flail and bend in all directions from the force, he grew dizzy and his stomach churned. He couldn't hold back, and finally vomited violently. The demon gasped as the bile from Krynan's stomach glazed his face. Squeezing Krynan's throat tighter, the demon reached up and wiped the liquid away. You disgusting little fucker! Krynan gasped desperately for air and pulled as hard as he could at the demon's fingers. They wouldn't move an inch, and as Krynan began to grow dizzy from strangulation, he began to panic. Finally, he narrowed his eyes and swung his fist. He tried to scream and reeled in pain as his hand shattered and bounced off the demon's hide. The demon grinned and squeezed harder. Down here, he snarled. We do the fighting. 
He lifted Krynan higher and then violently slammed him into the flaming ground beneath them. Krynan felt his newly reconstructed bones shatter and let out a wail as the demon pushed his face against the hot ground. Do you feel that, you terrorist garbage? Stick your tongue out and taste that burning dirt. That's all you'll be eating for the rest of time, worm! Krynan tried to scream as the scorching hot ground melted the skin of his face. The immense pressure from the demon's palm pushing down on him, threatening to pop his skull. He couldn't make a sound or wiggle free. He was at the monster's mercy. The demon continued laughing and pulled Krynan's melted face out from the fire. Pieces of his skin stuck to the rocky ground and stretched like taffy until they finally snapped free from his face as he was lifted. Let this be your first lesson. He lifted Krynan to eye level and licked his lips. The demon's jaw unhinged like a snake and his mouth opened wide, revealing two rows of jagged, razor-sharp teeth. Krynan whimpered out of fear, a noise he had never imagined himself making. He tried to shake himself free with what little strength he had left, but there was no escape to be made. The demon placed Krynan's head in his mouth, lining up his neck with his lower set of teeth. Krynan closed his eyes and braced as the jaw slammed shut, piercing his neck but not fully removing his head. He could smell the demon's putrid breath inside the abnormally large mouth. He felt his own blood gushing out onto the demon's tongue, and then cringed as the monster squeezed his fingers harder, and then twisted Krynan's body like one would a piece of jerky. Krynan's head finally ripped free, and he felt his neck snap. The teeth began to grind his skull, crunching it into pieces, and then Krynan heard something strange. Hello? Krynan? Krynan Jameso? Can you hear me? Krynan couldn't respond. He didn't have a mouth, no lungs, no vocal cords. He was just mush. I should say, I do not know if he can hear me. A slightly modulated voice said, as if through a shoddy radio connection. I have tried again and again, but I have not been able to reach him yet. As the creature swallowed, and the chewed-up pieces of Krynan's head began to descend his throat, everything stopped. All went silent, and after a few moments, the world went dark. You have died!